We have already collected the sensor readings locally and printed them on the serial terminal. In this video, we will learn how to wirelessly transmit this data via Bluetooth Low Energy so that we can access it in our mobile uh, phone using the NRF Connect for mobile app. We will also add a mechanism to control the sampling interval of the sensors, and that will also be accessible uh, from the mobile app. From the perspective of a firmware developer, data is exchanged in Bluetooth Low Energy through what's known as GAT services and characteristics. The development kit will act as a GAT server and the mobile phone will act as a GAT client. We'll use a GAT service in NRF Connect SDK called NSMS, which stands for Nordic Status Message Service, to expose the current or what we can call real-time sensor readings. The mobile phone can subscribe to periodic notifications from the development kit and also can read these values anytime it wants. That's why you see notify uh, and read next to the, uh, on the slides. So we'll have two NSMS services, one for the uh, environmental sensor and one for the IMU sensors. And you can also use them with the uh, simulated sensor if you configure uh, that flag to be on. In the previous video, if you recall, we set the interval for waking up the sensor data collector thread for, to fetch data from the sensor using a statically defined kickoff fix symbol. We will change this now. We will change it uh, to be dynamic and wireless control method by defining a custom GAT service. This will enable uh, us from the mobile de device to read the current sampling interval and also to set new values for the sampling intervals. If you would like to learn more about how data is exchanged in Bluetooth Low Energy, if you're new to this, check out Lesson 4 in Bluetooth Low Energy Fundamentals course on Nordic Developer Academy. I'm providing you the link in the, slide, in the slides. And with that, let's uh, switch to VS Code uh, to make these changes in the code. We're back in VS Code. Let's try to break this implementation into two parts. First part is sending sensor data through the Bluetooth Low Energy Connection via two NSMS services. The second part will be about the uh, sampling interval control. So we need to first include this service in our uh, application configuration file, basically take it from the uh, SDK. And that's simply by adding this uh, single line. While we have the prg.conf for the application configuration file open, let's finish all the software uh, configuration needed at this stage of the project to basically finish uh, video two. So we need to um, change the Bluetooth low energy connection parameters to support larger data transfers and maximum transfer unit. Um, as you remember, this application is based on the LBS uh, example and that example the LBS simply kind of like deals with a small amount of data to control the LEDs and, and monitor the status of the button but now we want to send larger amount of data and by the way these uh, kconfig uh, uh, configurations and the connection parameters for Bluetooth low energy is explained in depth in a dedicated lesson in the Bluetooth low energy fundamentals course uh, on Dev Academy uh, last thing I want to do in prg.conf is to um, change the default C library implementation. So I'll add, I'll add these lines uh, here, which is basically to switch uh, the uh, C library implementation from Picolib, that's the default one, to newlibc, and also to enable support for uh, float string formatting, uh, as we will use this in the code in a bit. Basically, that's the format that you will send the sensor reading over the Bluetooth Low Energy. And um, one thing that I want to mention, if we switch back to uh, another connect uh, for, visual, for Visual Studio Code extension, there is this uh, NRFK config GUI, which is a great uh, tool to visualize your or display your um, software configuration uh, for your application and it it, uh, it shows you the hierarchy and it shows you it, you can also enable these settings directly from there but i'm just doing it for convenient uh, from prj.conf so enable to kind of like reflect the new changes i need to first build so i'll speed up that part a bit 
build is almost complete and now I can open an RFK config GUI. This is just for you uh, to be aware of it. It kind of like show you the uh, hierarchy of these uh, software configurations. So if, for example, if we search for the NSMS, uh, the service we enabled here, we can see it, uh, if we jump to the item, it belongs to the Bluetooth services. And if we jump to this item, we can see all the services that we're using from the SDK. So we're using the LBS and we're using the NSMS, and you can see they're part of the Bluetooth uh, services, and there is a long list of services available by the SDK. And if we check the other one, uh, let's say we check the new lib uh, for the uh, C, library implementation if we jump to the item we can see it's no longer the default p called libc it's the new libc and you can also see the that we have enabled support for uh, uh, float string formatting now let's switch to the c code and actually use this service and create two instances of it and use it to send the sensor data over the bluetooth energy connection so of course, first we need to include the header files for the service and also for the Bluetooth low energy connection, right? And then to create two instances, we will use the macro provided in the uh, API documentation of the service that I shared the link in the slides. So they're quite user-friendly macro. You need to provide the name of the instance and then you name it and security level, initial value and the buffer size. And we're setting the buffer size to 64 uh, for now. And then uh, I need to also define a function to send a sensor uh, reading value. And this is uh, kind of like you, you <coughs> put it here. You basically pass it the pointer of the value, the size. So some of these values, uh, for example, for the accelerometer, there is the X, Y, and Z. So it's going to be three channels, while, while for the temperature, for example, it's just one sensor value. And you need to pass it the uh, string of the channel so we can print it and see it in the, uh, in the NRF Connect for mobile device. And then we basically need to call this function uh, here in the sensor data collector thread. We need to call it for the uh, channels available for the simulated sensor, if you're going to build for the simulated sensor, and also for the channels available for the actual sensor. So these four, uh, temperature, pressure, humidity, and gas resolution is for the BME688, while these two are provided by the BMI270. So it's a single uh, kind of like line, but we will call for the different uh, channels available. So let's go here and add uh, this. We first check if, the, if there is actually a valid connection before we uh, send these. These will check for the notification status from the uh, mobile side. And then here we add these. And then, of course, it's complaining about this not defined. So we can define it uh, up in the, uh, in the file. And basically, there are some macros that can register some callback functions uh, from the Bluetooth low energy stack that we can kind of like link this uh, to and be able to update this variable. So I'll add this code uh, here, right? So initially there is no connection and, and once we get connected, this uh, value is, is no longer null and we know we are in a connection. And I'm using this macro to kind of like register some callback function with the Bluetooth low energy stack to call these two functions that I've defined here. And that's it. That's only the changes needed to actually use the uh, NSMS uh, service and create two instances of it. So back in uh, VS Code uh, extension, let's build this application and then <coughs> flash it to our development kit. And I have the same setup as before. So I have the DK connected with the sensors and then I'm going to open uh, the NRF, uh, NRF Connect for Mobile uh, application on my phone. And if I switch back to VS Code, I'll probably mirror my phone so you can see what's going on. So I'm here, and then let me connect to the terminal to see the output, and I can reset the board 
just so we can start from the beginning you can see uh, the devices has been found and then the sensor thread reporting is kind of like printing and if I move the accelerometer it's the same as the previous uh, video right now let me just mirror my phone okay so I've mirrored my phone let me scan you can see the sensor node is here connect and you should notice that there are new services so the previous video we had only the nordic led button service but now you have two instances of the nsms and before i start interacting with them let me just uh, request mtu and then let's just set this to four nine eight the same value we've, we've set uh, basically here right so back in here okay and then if i do like this you can see mtu change to 498 that's give us the kind of like uh, logs and then if i enable a notification right and then this one we'll see we will get once we actually get a reading uh, from this once the sensor thread reporting yeah you can see i got the gas resolution but it's not only the gas resolution so if you do this you see we got the temperature pressure it's matching these numbers uh, humidity and gas resolution and keep getting the data and then if i do the same thing here uh, and you can see we're, we're getting them in the float format if i enable uh, the notification on the other instance of the nsms which is dedicated for the imu unit i should be able to get the um uh gyro and accelerate basically the imu uh, kind of like readings and again same story if i oh yeah if i do like this i see them uh, see the data coming here okay i guess with this uh, we've done the first part of this video which is reading the current or real-time readings of the sensors and in a, in, a, in a video the next video will get kind of like the stored data but but we still have a part to finish here which is controlling the connection interval we see like this is happening every um every 10 um seconds and again this was set in the kconfig uh, here we will change this from being a kconfig symbol to something that is dynamically controlled through the mobile app let me just um, commit these changes so people who are following along these videos can uh, reference these uh, commits. So yeah, we just changed two files, the prg.conf and the sensor data collector for, uh, for this part, right? You can see them like this. Okay, commit, yes. I closed all the windows here and uh, let's do the last part which is controlling the uh, sampling interval so again as I mentioned it's going it's now managed by this statically defined uh, kconfig so what we'll do again is to create a custom uh, service custom GAT service and what I'll basically doing is uh, doing the same steps explained in the that academy bluetooth low energy fundamentals exercise one so i need to uh, define some uuids for um for this new service and i'll put them here up so one for the service and one for the uh characteristic so i can put them here right and then uh the sampling interval i need to define it as a variable and then i need to uh, kind of like use a macro to define this custom service so i'll add this code that does all of that let me just add it here and you can see what we're doing here we're using this macro that will create and initialize uh, this uh, interval custom interval service and set it with this UID and inside it we will define a characteristic with read and write uh, operations and it will call these functions for the read and write of uh, kind of like operation and that's kind of like the data it's working on which is initially set by the kconfig and of course this is now gonna replace um, the uh, statically defined kconfig that we use for sleeping the sensor data collector thread so this will change here 
and this will change here and that's pretty much it so these cool macros that we have can create these services and characteristics for us easily so now i can um, build the application so back in uh, the extension and let's connect extension and then we, we build it and then uh, flash it to our development kit so flash and then what I'll do, I'll mirror my phone again, uh, so you'll be able to see the new characteristic and new service, and we'll be able to basically control the sampling intervals. So let me just mirror my phone. Okay, I mirrored my phone. Let me first uh, open the terminal here, and reset my board, Let's reset it found the, the sensors it's uh, printing and then in here I can scan and then I can connect to the sensor node and now you see the sampling in uh, in service service you're probably gonna see it as an unknown but then if you click here and I think on the phone there is a way you can um, if you hold it, I don't know how you hold it with the mirroring, but if you, yeah, like this, control and shift, you can you can assign this UID a name. So that's what I did here, sampling interval service. So, when, so, so the app can recognize it. And I did the same thing for the sampling interval. So you can see everything behaves as before, but let me just set the uh, uh, MTU. We set 498. And now if we read, uh, if we read this, this is 10. Right, so the sampling interval is 10, and you can see the frequency we're retrieving the data is, is 10. Uh, so if we want to test this, we can write a new value. So select a little Indian uh, unsigned integer 16, and let's say then the new value is, I don't know, 25. I need to wait 25 now. You can see. <coughs> new sampling interval 25 seconds and then it will take time uh, for this uh, it will take longer than 10 uh, seconds so we need to wait 19 uh, sorry we need to wait 19 in hexadecimal 25 in in, in decimal uh, for the next uh, sampling interval so it was that easy to add a, a sampling uh, a custom service and custom uh, characteristic um, okay so with that we are done with uh, video uh, 3 basically which is uh, exposing the sensor data readings the real time and also adding a custom service for controlling the, sam the sampling interval so let me just commit that and move back to the slides Sorry, let me just type video 3 controlling the sampling interval and then let's switch to the slides. All right, in the next video, we will learn how to store the sensors data on an unvolatile memory on the device and learn how to retrieve these stored data. So let's assume you leave the device somewhere, it's collecting the sensor data, and then uh, you come back to it after some time, you open your phone, you will be able to retrieve all the stored uh, data during the time you left it. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.